Okay, so today what we're going to start going over is some of the wiring in regards to hydronic heating and some of your uh, oil fire types of pieces of equipment. So what you see here on the screen here is that we have a L8182D uh, site type aquastat uh, and we have two uh, Honeywell zone valves. Now remember, Honeywell zone valves are usually a four wire uh, zone valve. You'll have uh, two yellow wires uh, which are usually going to be powering up the motor and then you'll have two red wires which are for your end switches. So we have a circulator, we have a transformer, CAD cell, and obviously a burner and an ignition transformer. So this is basic uh, a pretty simplified a diagram of an oil fired boiler using an L8182D aquastat. So how are we going to wire this? Well, obviously we always have to remember that we got to have a power source. We got to have some ways of shutting things on and off and being able to control your devices. So we have L1 and neutral over here. So this is a 120 volt circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our power and we're going to power it up to our breaker. Okay, Out of our breaker we're going to come into our emergency switch at the top of the stairs. Out of our top of the stairs emergency switch we're going to go to a firematic valve or a firematic switch. Now what I would like to kind of uh, iterate here is that not every home, not every place of business is going to have a firematic uh, safety switch uh, in series with your emergency switch and breaker and stuff like that. But if you do have one, it's going to be usually mounted uh, right above uh, where the boiler is or in somewhere in that vicinity to uh, shut the electricity off in the event of a fire, hence firematic. Okay, so out of the firematic switch, I'm going to now come to my service switch, which is at my boiler. Okay, this is the service switch that the mechanic will turn on and off to service and maintenance the boiler. So out of that service switch, I have to kind of think about where I'm going to go. Now. Just like every other circuit that is out there, I got to have line voltage, I got to have control voltage. So I have to be able to bring the power to where it needs to be. So where am I going to go with this, this wiring diagram? Well, as we said before, I have an L8182 Aquastat here. As you can see, I have an L1 and a neutral on there um, for some of my terminals. Well, we know that just through basic electricity that when you see L1 and the N on a wiring diagram, that means power and neutral. So what I'm going to do there first is because I know that that's going to be 120 volts, I'm going to come out of my service switch. And now I'm going to power up my L1. Okay, out of my L1 I am now going to, uh, and I'm going to use a different color for my neutrals. Uh, in this case I think I'm going to use a light blue. Okay, so out of my N I'm just going to come up and I'm just going to go right back to my neutral. That's going to complete that one circuit. Okay, because now remember the rules of basic electricity is you got to have a source switch path and a load in order for us to have a complete circuit. So we have our L1 which is our source, here's our path all the way through our switches, our wire, and right to our load. Our load is going to be the L8182D Aquastat. So that's that one complete circuit. But what we have to figure out and we have to remember is that we also have to be able to power up our thermostat and our, our zone valves. Because remember, our zone valves operate off of 
120 volt uh, after off of 24 volts sorry so for in order for me to get that 24 volts I have to be able to supply my transformer my step down transformer with 120 volts so let's take care of that now so we're gonna come out here I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna power up that okay so they're wired in parallel okay let's come back out Okay. And now I'm just going to go straight back up to my neutral. Okay. There we go. So now I have powered up my L8182D prim uh, Aquastat primary control. And I also have powered up and brought 120 volts to my primary. Okay. So what else am I going to do? This is where sequence of operation of a boiler really comes into play. We have to understand what an aquastat actually does. Well, an aquastat is just like in the name of it, aquastat. Aqua, water, stat means temperature, just like a thermostat. So I am monitoring the boiler temperature based off of what my aquastat is reading. And based off of that water temperature, I am now going to be turning my my burner on. I'll be turning on my circulator when that call for heat uh, happens. So, what do we have left as far as our controls are concerned and our terminals? Well, we got a B1, we got a B2. We got a C1 and we got a C2. Well, what do those terminals mean? Well, it's pretty easy to remember because in some HVAC we use association with everything, okay? So I have a B1 and B2 and a C1 and C2. Well, where do these things go? Well, the easiest way to always remember this is your B terminals will go to your burner, to your burners. Okay, B, B, burner. Okay, so I'm going to take my B1, and again, I'm going to use a different color because I want everybody to see that this is a completely different circuit. Okay, I'm going to take my B1, and I'm going to power up my burner components. Well, what are my burner components in this case? Remember, this is an oil-fired boiler. Okay, and I'm going to power up my my burner. I'm also going to power up my ignition transformer. Because remember, those are two loads inside an oil burner. So we have to make sure that they are receiving 120 volts of electricity. Now to complete that circuit, all we're going to do, and again, I'm just going to use a different color. Okay, in a way, I kind of feel like Bob Ross here, but you know, but pretty little colors. And we are going to use, I think I'm just going to use, uh, here we'll use, here we'll use that shade of blue. Okay, pretty color blue. And I'm going to now complete my circuit. Okay, so I'm going to come out of my common, out of my motor. Okay, and I'm just going to bring it right back to my B. Just like that. And the same thing will apply for my ignition transformer. Okay, and I'm just going to do it in two separate lines just so that everybody can kind of see that I have two wires that are going to come out of my B2 because B2 would actually technically be my neutral. Okay, so that takes care of my my burner components. Now let's focus on your C1 and C2. What is my C1 and C2 control? Well, again, we use association. Okay, C1 and C2 goes to my circulator. Okay, circulator begins with the letter C. So again, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and I'm going to use this 
ugly green color to signify our circulator. So all I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to come out of my C. Again, C1 is like my power. I'm going to come in. I'm going to go into my circulator. I'm going to come out of my circulator. And I'm going to go right back to my C2. Okay? So, now, what do we do? What do I have left? Well, I still have this FF terminal here. I still have TT. Well, what is... What are those terminals? What are, what are we talking about here? Well, just like a oil primary control, uh, you have TT and FF. Well, on a primary control, we know that FF is going to be for my flame. So I'm going to use a wonderful yellow. We're going to use yellow for this. That FF terminal is going to be wired into my CAD cell. Because remember, my CAD cell is the all-seeing eye when it comes to an oil burner. If the CAD cell does not see any sort of light whatsoever, once that burner fires off, it's going to lock out. It's going to tell the aquastat that I didn't have flame. Something is wrong. So the boiler will go into a lockout condition. Okay? So that is what my CAD cell is going to do. The castle is always going to get wired to the FF terminal. Now all I have left is is my transformer. I got two thermostats. This is a two zone uh, system okay, using two Honeywell thermostats or two Honeywell zone valves, sorry. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a different shade of red and I'm going to power up my trans, my uh, my secondary side of the transformer, and I'm going to send that power out to my thermostats. Now remember, zone valves are loads. Loads have to get full source voltage in order for them to work. So I have to be able to wire my thermostat and my zone valves in parallel with each other. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my power. I'm going to send it over here to one side. I'm going to take it out over here. And I'm going to send it over here. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to wire in my zone valves for themselves. Okay? And again, I'm going to use a different color here. Okay? We're going to use this red here. Okay? That is going to go to one side of my motor. This guy is going to go to one side of my motor. I am now going to take both of those and I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to just use this orange color here. And I'm going to send my other side of my motor back to my other side of my transformer, which is my common. So it's going to come out of here. I'm going to go right in. I'm going to come out of here. And right in. So as this guy works, I'm going to send power out to this thermostat. Once that thermostat closes, I'm going to energize my motor inside my zone valve, which will hopefully open the zone valve to give me heat to my space. And to complete that circuit, I'm just going right back to my transformer. The same applies to this side. I'm going to have power coming out through my thermostat, down to my motor, and then back. So now, what do I do with the remainder of my Honeywell zone valves. Well, remember, it's a four-wire zone valve. So I have to be able to have some sort of signal or some sort of communication between the zone valve and the aquastat to tell that aquastat, yes, my zone valve actually did open. And once that happens, I can now proceed giving heat to that space. 
So how do I do that? Well, all I have left is my TT terminals. And again, remember, these are wired in parallel. Your zone valve, this zone valve is wired in parallel. So I got to do the exact same thing to my end switches up here. So in order to do, make this happen, I'm going to use this shade of green. And I'm going to bring power, or not sorry, my one end of my end switch up to one of my T's. I'm going to bring my other side of my end switch. Okay, you notice how this kind of gets a little bit kind of hairy a little bit. But this is where it goes. It goes to the other side of the T. So once that little end switch there closes, which is a proving switch, okay, it's a dry set of contacts. There's no power there. It just closes and that completes the circuit through the zone valve, which will now tell the aquastat that you do have a zone valve that has opened and it is in need of heat. So I'm going to do the exact same thing to my other side. Okay, and I'm just going to use a different shade. I'm going to use I'm going to use this color. Okay, and again, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of do this. I'm going to make this as easy as possible. Okay, I'm going to come out. I'm going to come up. Come into one side of my T. I'm going to come out on the other side and go to my other side of my T. And again, dry set of contacts. So once this motor opens all the way, it's going to trigger this little end switch in there. Once that end switch is closes, it's going to complete the circuit between my T and my T. Once that happens, my aquastat knows that I have a call for heat which will in turn turn on my burner, turn on my circulators, so that I can now deliver my hot water through my baseboard to that particular zone that is calling for heat. And that's how you wire a L8182D with Honeywell zone valves.